Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer for January the 4th, 2021. I'm Pastor Steve Woodfin from our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. This is the first uh, of our morning and evening devotions for the year 2021. And uh, behind me, you see this big 30, number 30 up there. Uh, my wonderful wife, Kim, put that up in our living room window for our 30th anniversary, which was about a month ago or so. Uh, and then we moved it into my office here because the tree and the numbers didn't quite all fit together in the same place. Uh, but we went to uh, Historic Trinity yesterday uh, to be there and worship before they took the Christmas decorations down because that's where we were married 30 years ago. So it was really, really um, just joyful to be there again um, and to worship at Christmas time. Their decorations are absolutely astounding. And I uh, heard a great sermon there from Pastor Ron Gettler, um, who is one of the um, one of the assisting pastors there at Historic Trinity. And he ended his sermon with the verse that was our theme verse for our wedding 30 years ago. So I thought that was pretty neat. I love the little coincidences that God puts into our lives to remind us that he is there, that he cares for us, and he is active in our lives too. So I'll share that verse with you in just a moment. But first, um, let's begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen from Psalm 40, beginning at verse 8. I desire to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips. As you know, O Lord, I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation words of affirmation that um, that God's word is living and active and it just kind of flows out of us uh, as we want to share that love and that, that word of salvation with the people around us. And the New Testament reading today is from Luke chapter 2, the boy Jesus in the temple. Now Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover and when he was 12 years old they went up according to custom. When the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey, but then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. You see the, the picture of um, Jesus' focus, his foundation in his earthly life of God's word and prayer. And there's numerous, numerous accounts in the Gospels of Jesus um, walking away from the disciples, from the crowds, or getting up early to make sure that he spent time in prayer with his Heavenly Father and clearly here, even at age 12, focused on God's Word. Listen to what Martin Luther says uh, about uh, how our lives should reflect that, that joyful reality, that, that foundation of Scripture and prayer. When I feel that I've become cool and joyless in prayer because of other tasks or thoughts, for the flesh and the devil always impede and obstruct prayer, I take my little psalter, hurry to my room, or if it is the day and hour for it, to the church where a congregation is assembled, and as time permits, I say quietly to myself and word for word the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and if I have time, some words of Christ or of Paul or some Psalms, just as a child might do. It is a good thing to let prayer be the first business of the morning and the last at night. Guard yourself carefully against those false deluding ideas which tell you, wait a little while. I will pray in an hour. First, I must attend to this or that. 
Such thoughts get you away from prayer and into other affairs, which so hold your attention and involve you that nothing comes of prayer for that day. Boy, I can identify with that exactly. Finally, mark this, that you must always speak the Amen firmly. Never doubt that God in his mercy will surely hear you and say yes to your prayers. Never think that you are kneeling or standing alone. Now catch this, let me repeat that. Never think that you are kneeling or standing alone. Rather, think that the whole of Christendom, all devout Christians, are attending there beside you, and you are standing among them in a common, united petition, which God cannot disdain. Do not leave your prayer without having said or thought, very well, God has heard my prayer. This I know as a certainty and a truth. This is what amen means. I love that idea that uh, when we pray alone, never think that you're actually alone, but you're praying with all of Christendom, with all of those who are part of God's kingdom, praying side by side, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, and, uh, and so let me get back to the sermon now that Ron Gettler preached today at Historic Trinity. He actually preached on this reading from Luke chapter 2, the boy Jesus in the temple, and uh, with, of course, the focus on the importance of God's word in our lives. And he ended the sermon at the very end with Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, which was the theme verse for our wedding, Kim's and my wedding, 30 years ago. I just thought that was awesome, just absolutely awesome to have gone down there, especially on the occasion um, of our anniversary and then hearing that same verse again. Uh, and, and so it is true that uh, God's word, as we spend time in it, lights our path, um, gives, gives us the way to go, shows us the way we are to walk, not just in eternity, which of course would be enough, but really it illuminates our path every day of our lives. And so Jesus shows us this at age 12 and um, shows us uh, shows us that throughout his entire life here on earth as he constantly was in scripture and, and, uh, and um, although of course he, he wrote it <laughs> and also constantly in prayer with his heavenly father. So with that in mind, let's go to our Lord in prayer now. Almighty God, you have poured into our hearts the true light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light may shine forth in our lives. Through that same Jesus Christ, your son, who is also our Lord, and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let's conclude with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. Have a wonderful Monday. Great day in the Lord.